Good afternoon to all the participants. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to our uh, speaker of today, Dr. Justin, a good old friend of us here in uh, Satibama. So uh, I would like to request the participants kindly mute yourself. You will be uh, muted throughout the session. Please don't uh, start your video. Kindly stop the video. And the chat box will also be disabled for the first 30 minutes. At 3.30, we'll be enabling the chat box, during which time you can post your questions and the questions will be answered. So with this, uh, I think we can start the session, sir. Sir, can we, sir? Justin, sir? Sir, please uh, unmute yourself, sir. So I would like to uh, present today's speaker, Dr. Y. Justin Kovil Pillai, who is the Assistant Professor in the Department of Botany, St. Xavier's College, Palayam Kota, Tirnalveli. Sir, uh, he has completed one full circle. He started his uh, research in St. Xavier's College, did his PhD in plant biotechnology, proceeded to be the junior research fellow in a DBT funded project in St. Xavier's College itself. Also, he was a senior research fellow in a project funded by DBT and MOEF, uh, following which he joined uh, Satibama for a short span of time, following which uh, he joined uh, St. Joseph's College, Trichy as assistant professor in botany. He's currently grading uh, three PhD candidates. He has 42 research papers to his credit and uh, written three book chapters. His expertise in plant biotechnology, I guess, will help all the young minds to come up with their biotechnological ideas. Over to Do Dr. Justin, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor, uh, for your nice words of introduction. A good afternoon to one and all who have joined in this meeting. First of all, I would like to thank the management of uh, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology for giving this wonderful opportunity. And also I thank the HOD in terms of Dr. V. Ramesh Kumar and Dr. Narendra Kumar. Uh, this is the time to register my heartfelt thank to the organizing secretaries, Dr. Diagarajan and Dr. Masilamani Silvam and also Dr. Prehas and all other faculty members of our biotechnology department. I feel and proud being with this auspicious hours, that is the Satibama University, where I have started my teaching career. And respected uh, professors and the students who have joined in this meeting, I am really uh, happy to see all, uh, all this occasion on this six days national webinar lecture series on biotechnology concept to practice. On this series, the second day, that is a crop production and management. So I'm not going to take much time to explain all these things. This is what we are, whatever we have been studying in our BTEC or MTEC or even BSc Biotech or uh, MSc Biotech or Botany or uh, all other aspects. So all of us, we finished uh, our lunch after our post lunch is the time to, I'm not going to tempt you, but this is the time where we are supposed to understand what is uh, food and the importance of food also. All the ingredients or the so-called the energy giving substances are all existing, all the food product, it may be the source of carbohydrate or it may be the source of proteins or maybe the uh, source of vitamins and minerals, all of them are existing in the uh, plant-based food products. So whatever the material that we have been consuming, all of them have been existing with all our energy giving substances. So as we are all known that India is currently facing one of its most formidable economic challenges, not only due to the COVID-19 experience, but also it is widening the demand supply gap in food grain production. We need to act now to avert higher inflation, 
rising food imports and current account deficit and inadequate food security. India has the highest number of hungry people in the world, but at the same time, biotechnology agriculture through its wide offering landscape can provide the answer, helping improve the effectiveness of agriculture inputs, which bring down input cost and increase output. But at the same time, we are supposed to look at the challenges before the bioagriculture industry. What is the overall potential of the industry? How can various stakeholders address this and challenges of expanding the market? What kind of growth enables or needed to realize the sector's potential? Though we have reached self-sufficient production of various crops, but we are, what is the present status? This is the time to realize as a biologist or the biotechnologist or the future or budding scientist, we are supposed to think about what are we going to do? Are we fulfilled all the uh, needs of our society? Because as I mentioned in the beginning, India is one of the country where people are living poverty because you know the poverty uh, percentage people who are living. To answer such a question, we believe or the Ashenger embarked on journey to define the industry vision for 2025. They recommend the measures various stakeholders must take to realize this vision. You may be a learner or a scientist or the stakeholders of any one of these uh, group. We believe that the bio agriculture industry has the potential to scale up to US dollar 34 to 37 billion by 2025 if certain growth enablers are put in place. The persistent demand supply imbalance in India's agriculture calls for immediate action. India needs to increase the land under cultivation to feed the rapidly growing population, improve the agriculture productivity and cater to the changing food consumption pattern. India's declining self-sufficiency in certain foods such as pulses, oil seeds has added to the problem. From being largely self-sufficient in oil seed in 1993-94, the country is now the world's second largest importer of edible oil, spending more than US dollar 18 billion in 2018-19. So this is a time to think about what can we do or what could be done but part of our uh, research or learner or the policy makers. The rising consumption and stagnantly yield have made India the world largest importer of pulses, an average Indian, Indian's main source of nutrition. We are all familiar and we are all proud to be that the ground revolution of the 1960s and 70s did not cover the dryland crop such as pulses. We are all familiar, most of the pulses have been cultivated from the dry lands. As a result, while the food grain yield in India increased by about 400 percent between 1950 to 51 and 2011 to 12, the pulses yield rose by only 55 percent. So by seeing these slides, we may be the crops of cereals and grains or it may be a vegetables, or it may be the fruits, or be it pulses, or be it spices and condiments, or the very important crops, that is oil yielding crops, maybe a groundnut or soybean, or castor, or whatever may be the species of the crops, or be it fibers, we are all familiar, or the plantation crops, we are familiar, maybe be it coconut or any other crops, coffee or tea or any other products, or even sugar yielding crops, including saccharum officinarum or tubers or fodder crops, or being, be it medicinal plants or medicinal crops, for everything we have been saturated or self-sufficient, but we are telling or we, are, we have been showing everything in the form of report, but what is the present status or the scenario? It should be a transparent one. So are we self-satisfied or pity on us? We are supposed to think about because we are speaking about the green revolution, of course, 
we are supposed to salute the person doctor or honorable doctor ms swaminathan he is the father of revolution because of his contribution we could be able to saturated or meet the yield of various crop especially the wheat the main aim was to increase the production of wheat by modern agricultural practices the high yield of variety of wheat sarbadi sonara was developed in 1967 itself though we have been released or introduced new varieties or hybrids of vegetable crops or uh, cereals and grains or any other crops that we have uh, for mention but this is the field where we are supposed to because most of the people because agriculture is one of the important or the backbone of our country so agriculture is the branch of science which deals with the production of plants and raising of animals useful to man involves the soil cultivation breeding and management of crops and livestock so this is the agriculture area it is where we could be able to cultivate or scientific cultivation of various crop for our need the crops you know very well what is what are crops in general whatever by the plants or the when the plants of same kinds are grown and there and cultivated in one place on a large scale it is called crop different types of crop requires different climatic condition because the science that deals with the cultivation of plants and rearing the animals human use is a agriculture we are all familiar with the types of crops there are two major crops ma mainly kharif crops and rabi crops and zaid crops is also included you know very well what are the crops which have been the kharif crops these crops grow in the monsoon season in the month of june and harvested in the month of september paddy is the main kharif crop rabi crops these are the uh, grown in the winter season in the month of october and harvested in the month of march wheat is the main rabi crop zaid crop is the another group we know very well the seasonal fruits and vegetable most of the agricultural crops or season crops we are familiar with they have been cultivated during uh, sown in march and harvested in june especially the seasonal fruits and vegetable like cucumber all other uh, vegetables everything can be cultivated from the uh, during this uh, period just i would like to uh, summarize or uh, brief the crop protection practices that we have been following i am not going to take much time on explaining the, these crop protection pra practices because from this slide itself we can easily understand what are all the steps or involved in these crop protection practices uh, traditionally for many long years because this preparation you know very well about 70% of the indian population Uh, practices agriculture hence the production and the management of crop is an important aspect to ensure optimal productivity in the fields the major agricultural practices involved in the crop production and management are as follows the first one is just i'll take a few minutes to explain the steps the preparation of soil we are all familiar the soil is loosened and tilted before the seeds are sown plows are used for the purposes if the soil contains quick lumps they are broken with the help of hoe this process aerates the soil so that the roots breathe easily the nutrients and the minerals get properly mixed with the soil and come at the top so the fertility of the soil increases and is fit for the plantation then second step is the sowing you know very well what is sowing of seeds before that you are supposed to select the seeds the good quality infection free seeds are collected and sown on the prepared land these seeds should be sown at proper depths and proper distances we are all familiar what are the techniques traditional techniques broadcasting dipping and drilling all other are also practices seed dropping behind the plow and transplanting and hill dropping and check row planting these are the different methods then third important step is the irrigation i have uh, rearranged this step is a irrigation 
you know very well how this is after adding this or sowing the seed the crops require water at regular intervals for the proper growth the supply of water to plant is known as irrigation well rivers lakes tube wells and different sources of irrigation the modern techniques of irrigation include the sprinkler system and the drip system water is very important for the germination of the seeds so after germination or growing of the crops we are supposed to manure and fertilizer we are all familiar for many long years people would be able to follow the adding the manures you know very well what are manures and fertilizers have been added after 1960s after the production of all uh, synthetic fertilizers which are available in plenty but at the same time in order to get more or maximum productivity we started to exploit or make use of the fertilizers manure is prepared by using the de decomposing plant and animal matter in compost pits whereas the fertilizers on the other hand the chemicals prepared in factories which contain nutrients for specific plant they give faster result than manures another important aspect next to the manuring or fertilizing the protection from weeds you know very well what are weeds the uh, unwanted plants whatever the unwanted plant which have been available in the midst of the field of our uh, desire of a crop the undesirable plant that grow along with the crops are called weeds these weeds feed on the nutrition provided to the crops and thus reduce the supply of nutrition to the crops thereby inhibiting this growth the growth of these weeds needs to be prevented in order to enhance the growth of the plants so the process of removal of weeds is called weeding we are familiar to achieve this weed sites are also employed but instead of using weed sites which are essentially chemical specifically made to destroy the weeds they are usually sprayed before seeding and flowering normal weeding method or a traditional methods also were used for many long years but as we are in a modern age make use of the available uh, technologies in the field of agriculture we could be able to advise to use various uh, weed site the um, next important step is the harvesting you know very well as soon as reach the uh, maturation or the ripening time of any harvest or uh, any crop when the crop mature it is cut off for further processing this process is known as harvesting it is usually manual labor done with the help of sickles or however mechanical harvesting is also used these days machines such as combine harvesters you know you might have seen in the natural fields nowadays most of the large size machinery vehicles are available they are used where the crops are harvested and threshed in one threshing separation of grains from harvested crops is called threshing it is done either mechanically or by cattle because for when we follow the traditional method of uh, cultivation or farming we appoint the labors for harvesting as well as threshing but due to the lack of uh, laborers we could be able to go for the alternative method called the mechanical threshing and winnowing is also one of the traditional method the separation of grains and chaff is called winnowing it is done either mechanically or manually the last step of the crop production practices is the storage whatever may be the crop may be the grains and cereals or it may be pulses or any other crops as soon as harvested it should be properly stored unless otherwise everything get wasted to avoid this we are supposed to because not only for our uh, a family use or the society the whole society use or the world the grain should be properly stored if they are to be kept for long period they need to be protected from the pest and moisture the freshly harvested seeds should be dried before they are stored this prevents the attack from the microorganism and the pest the grains are stored in uh, guinea pigs or jute bags or metallic bins dried neem leaves are added to protect them from the damage at home for the individual home or the small scale storage various practices because we are familiar with the insect insecticidal properties of the neem tree or the neem leaves large amount of grains are stored in granaries 
or silos with a specific chemical treatments to protect them from the pest and insect. So, so far I have uh, covered the crop protection practices, but as per the title given, how for these biotechnological tools as used for or exploiting for managing, management of the crops or crop management, because uh, the organizers, when we invited, are asked me to focus on crop management by exploiting various biotechnological tools. So before entering into that, just I would like to uh, summarize the key points of the crop production. The entire world depends on agriculture for its food. Therefore, it is very important to produce and store the harvested crop carefully. The soil should be loosened and aerated properly during crop production. Menus and fertilizer need to be added carefully. Too much fertilizer damage the soil while too little makes the crop deficient in nutrition. The crops should be irrigated periodically. The unwanted plants should be removed from the cultivated fields. These plants absorb the nutrition provided to the crop and obstruct their growth and development. The mature crops are harvested mechanically or manually. The harvested grains are dried and stored to protect them from pest and pathogen. Now you can see how these so-called crops of or the agriculture products have been wasted, not only because of our man-made activities, sometimes it may be uh, due to the natural calamities or over uh, production or the lack of facilities to, to store them or manage them. So you might have seen because during this COVID-19, in the beginning or the month of April, how many number of people are, were struggling because of producing various crops. They have dumped all the uh, products from their agriculture sectors. You, most of us or everybody might be, have been witnessing how much agriculture products have been wasted due to various reasons, not only due to COVID-19 alone. Every year or every season, how much amount are, are we uh, faithful or are we okay to, are we able to manage all the cultivated crops properly? So this is the quote which have been taken uh, from their article that is transformation of agriculture must be the top priority concern of our public policies, including science and technology policies, stated by our former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. We are all familiar. The transformation is one of the need of the hour. So in order to manage or the crop or cultivate a crop, biotechnology provides various uh, openings, because we are, we are familiar as we are the biotechnologist or the biotechnology student. If you are 200 people, we all 200 or 300 members can define on our own accord. But in general, biotechnology is nothing but any technique used the biological organism to make a product or to modify the existing one, or you can exploit the technique for the specific purpose. So as we are all familiar, this biotechnology refers one of the application of wide range of scientific techniques to the modification and improvement of plants and animals, microorganisms. The agriculture biotechnology, there are a number of uh, biotechnology or various disciplines, interdisciplines of biotechnology. Among agriculture uh, biotechnology is that uh, area of biotechnology involving the application of application to agriculture. So it is traditional technology, biotechnology has been used for thousands of years since the advent of the first agriculture practices for the improvement of plants and animals. Also the exchange of genetic material through conventional breeding records that be two plants being crossed are closely related species such active plant breeding has led to the development of superior plant varieties for more rapidly than we have occurred in wild due to the random mating. In this juncture, I would like to tell you in the 1970s, a series of complementary advances in the field of molecular biology provided scientists with the ability to readily 
move DNA between the more distantly related organism. Today, this recombinant technology, DNA technology has reached the stage where the scientist can take a piece of DNA containing one or more specific genes from nearly any organism, including plants, animals, bacteria, or viruses. The application of recombinant DNA technology frequently has been referred to as genetic engineering. So not only, as I pointed out initially or just before, due to the natural, we are also uh, witnessing another important locust attacks in most of the, or in few states of uh, North India. So uh, how do we, or uh, in what way we are going to protect or manage the cultivated crops from such a uh, natural things? Because we are not, able to control all the natural things. So in order to provide or in order to prevent all such a natural or preserve or protect or save all the agriculture product, the plant biotechnology is a set of technique which will use for a specific needs or opportunity situation that combine multiple needs and multiple opportunities are common. For example, a single crop may be required to provide sustainable food and helpful nutrition or protection of the environment and opportunities for jobs and incomes also. Finding or developing suitable plant is a typically highly complex challenges. Based on the advanced advent of all biotechnology technologies, we could be able to multiply, say for example, the, bio, the same plant biotechnology that assists the developing new varieties and traits include the genetics and genomics as well as the marker-assisted selection, the genomic or genetically engineered crop. We are all familiar, whatever the crop which have been developed through exploiting the principles of both the genetic as well as the genome. We are all familiar what is genome and what are genomes. The DNA is the only material by which we can, the desired character can be able to identify it and they can be isolated and incorporated to our host gene where we want to multiply and they can also be breed and they can be introduced as well as and released as a new variety. These technologies allow researchers to detect the map, discover their functions, select for specific genes in genetic resources, and breeding and transfer genes for traits in plants where they are needed. You can see what are all the a perspective on what perspective the biotechnologies or so-called the people they have been following this type of methods, the genetic structures and mechanism, methods for transgenic biotechnology, and identification of traits and genes, and plant genome sequence and molecular markers, bioinformatics, gene editing and genome editing, and synthetic biology. These are all the various uh, pavements or the places or avenues where we can go for managing the crop or the crop management can be exploited or properly followed. So in order to understand, there are two important objectives. One is understanding of all aspects of the transgenic or genetic engineering process. Because most of the crops, we are as we are familiar, the objectives of plant breeding because the the main objectives of plant breeding is to produce a high yield and resistant varieties or insect or specific resistant resisting varieties or stress abiotic or biotic stress. Plant varieties could be able to produce. This is the main objectives of plant breeding. Even then, we are not able to. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. Though we introduced 1960s, 70s, it's a green revolution because of the green revolution, we could be able to reach the maximum productivity. But what is the present situation? Are we satisfied or self-sufficient or self-saturated with all the cultivated crops or most of the crops are, or you are supposed, on the other hand, we are supposed to think about what could be the reasons for the people, those who are living in the poverty line, because the people living in the poverty line is increasing. But as a, after introducing the Green Revolution, it somewhat it was reduced. But what is the present status? As a biotechnology, we have our conscience. We are supposed to work 
but we are in the name of research are we cheating ourselves or are we cheating our uh, society or the entire world this is the time we are supposed to so there are two important objectives or understanding this better understanding of all aspect one is the transgenic or genetic engineering process for enhancing the efficiency and precision and proper expression of the added genes or nucleic acid molecule the wide range of useful and valuable traits including the complex traits this is another in the following slides from the following slides you can easily understand how for this uh, uh, biotechnology help us to manage the crops which have been cultivated or being we have been wasted so one is the bio fortification is the development of micronutrient rich stable crops using traditional breeding method and the modern biotechnology using this technique plant breeders focus on crops such as soybean that have high nutritional content this technique is advantageous for developing countries in providing necessary nutrient especially to the rural population who rarely have access to commercially fortified foods nutrition by technology techniques fulfill plant micronutrient requirements by supplying organic nutrients through microorganism and their byproducts these microorganism dictate the natural nutrient cycle of the soil and built soil organic matter another important uh. aspect in the management of crop or crop management is pest because there are various so we are all familiar there is a specific interaction between plant insect interaction or insect in plant interaction not all the insects will feed on all the crops there will be a specificity we know very well what could be the reason behind all other uh, aspect you might be studied but how do we or how we are able to manage the pest because the pest is also a part of our uh, our uh, e or environment or also they are also equally contributed or participate in the ecological balance or equilibrium agriculture crops face a significant threat from a variety of natural enemies such as predators parasites and pathogen these pests can damage the crop impact the nutrition value of the produce biotechnology offers a solution to this problem with minimal harm to the environment this is very important so we are advised to use or the biotechnology as i mentioned any technique use the biological organism for the development of human being or you can modify this so in this if you understand the basic thing you can easily understand the biotech offers the solution to this problem with minimal harm to the environment that means there is a harm and what of course you may ask what are you trying to, to convey are you supporting the biotechnological techniques or the tools or you against of course we have all the things right we have all the rights to exploit all the available techniques but at the same time we are supposed to concern with our own surroundings or the environment environment where we are living of course so the minimal harm because in order to produce or in order to get maximum yield we are supposed to exploit the techniques but at the same to that your our technology should not spoil our the existing environment the waste water utilization population growth climate change urbanization and limited fresh water resources have made waste water a vital source of the irrigation water for farmers it is particularly important to utilize the waste water from domestic use institution and industries grey water generated from the wash basin servers and baths is suitable for reuse and contain nutrient important for the agricultural production despite all the wide range of bio agricultural offering the government of india has approved only gm cotton you know very well seeds for commercialization since 2002 bt cotton we are familiar but at the same time when we talk about the bt cotton there is a voluminous resistance from the pharmaceuticals or the restriction on farmer sites 
the genetically modified or BT cotton seeds for commercialization. These seeds were quickly adopted by farmers and this paved the way for the growth, the bio agriculture. After the introduction of genetically modified BT cotton seeds, the bio agriculture sector registered a combo annual growth rate of 49% from 2003 to 2010. Then this, it has slowed to 18% during 9 to 2012. Several factors have contributed to this sector losing steam. 90% of the cotton area is already under BT cotton cultivation because we are familiar because the Gujarat states is known for many development the same way. This is also Maharashtra, not only Maharashtra and Gujarat. 90% of the cotton area is already under BT cotton cultivation leaving a little room for the growth. Lack of new hybrids, a passive regulatory system and limited investment in research development to have hurt growth and innovation. So above all, there are some challenges before our agriculture biotechnology sectors. So what are the challenges? The BT cotton seeds are genetically modified to produce an insecticide that kills ballworm, a common cotton paste in India. The government of India allowed Monsanto company, an America firm to start selling BT cotton to local farmers in 2002. Since then, BT cotton has prevailed, pervaded cotton farming in India. Today, the BT cotton acres accounts for more than 90% of the total area under cotton cultivation. This has helped India become a net exporter of cotton. <coughs> BT cotton has succeeded in transforming cotton into one the most productive and profitable crops in the country. However, it still requires further research because of the development of BT cotton resistant paste. But at the same time, just at this junction, I would like to tell you how this the production of management of paddy as well as the production of management of wheat and the production and management of the potato and pulses. This is actually I wanted to discuss elaborately, but uh, due to the time constraints of time, that is the production of management or all other crops could be added or you can uh, refer, it might be studied. Paddy is a crop for excellence in many countries, especially in South Asian countries. Paddy contribute consistently to around 45% of India's cereal production. The achievement of future rice production target to exclusively grow progressive yield growth. The rice is being identified as a competitive agriculture commodity for export. In the rice production, there is a very large production potential. The scientists are prompt to identify yield, re-stabilizing the factors and develop method to correct them. So what are the re-stabilizing factors? First, as I just before I have mentioned, the pest and diseases. The annual losses due to the incidence of pest and diseases is to an extent 40%. There has been an approach to solve these losses through exploitation of forced plant resistant to minimize losses, but it's not a lasting solution. That's what I told you. Biotechnology provides our opportunity to develop a resistant varieties. In Kerala, rice mix has been first causing losses to paddy to compare these biotypes like biotype 5 and biotype 4 made appearances. Another solution is genetic solution through genetic transformation. Because in this hybrid rice technology, the variety improvement brings about yield maximization, which should be reinforced by intensification of cropping, which depends on the large scale infrastructure development like irrigation and management. Government agencies do not have a single view on the application because some of us are as a layman, you may have a, because basically I am the son of a, an agriculturist. So I have been experienced even in our farm itself, not only due to a failure of a, a monsoon or adequate monsoon, because we, India as a country, we receive maximum rainfall, but with all these available facilities or the available uh, uh, resources we are not able to get 
what we expected. But at the same time, we are ready to blame one another, especially we are ready to blame uh, the government. Whatever may be the things or the changes or the novelty or they want to introduce, but most of the time we are not able to accept it at the first hand. So government agencies do not have a single view on the application of uh, genetically modified technology or GM technology in agriculture. The country also lacks a roadmap to leverage biotechnology. This is very important because most of you know that known this fact, but some of us may not be. The country also lacks a roadmap to the leverage biotechnology because we are supposed to, this is the time to convince the people or try to understand because if you look at the our developed countries, like country like USA or Brazil or uh, Australia, all other uh, countries, they are uh, exploiting the biotechnology for the production as well as the management of various crops. So the regulatory approvals are not given in time and multiple regulatory bodies cause inordinate delays. And 90% of the application for field trials are bending for approval. 44 of which are for GM food crops. To overcome such uh, delays, our government proposed set up the Biotechnology Regulatory Authority of India, an independent regulator under the Ministry of Science and Technology, but the proposal is still waiting for cabinet approval for many other, other aspects too. So regulatory framework, lack of common stance on GM technology. So we have been signed or uh, it is introduced, the BT Code in 2002 itself but regulatory framework lack of common stance on GM technology across government ministries and between the central and state government has brought the agriculture regulatory system to a halt. So this is another important challenge. So at this juncture, uh, the following few slides, which may give us some few questions, the same thing may have in your mind also to clarify are we ready to, or what are the biotechnology application in agriculture? It has, the biotechnology application has both a genetically modified and non-genetically modified application, agriculture. It has made the plant breeding process more precise and quick. The non-GM application involves tools like, as I already mentioned, the marker assisted selection, tissue culture and mutation breeding, because we are all familiar with tissue culture with crop raised to crash, especially the banana, all other crops, even coffee, tea plantation, have been established well. Most of the people are the, uh, able to exploit as well as use the tissue culture raised plants to certain extent, or they have been extensively exploited the tissue culture raised plants. So GM technology is being used in the world agriculture since 1996 across the country. It has application like insect control that I already mentioned. The biotechnology has application like insect control, weed management, water use efficiency, and nitrogen efficiency, salinity tolerance, etc., which helps the growth of our crops with a less pesticide and under difficult abiotic stress condition. That's what I told you even in the midst of the lecture. So these are all the lacunas, or these are all the challenges during the cultivation of various crops. For all these challenges, these biotechnology provide the solution. So there are other applications like edible oil crops with the modified fatty acid profile, maize with the modified nutrition content for the animal feed industry, rice with the beta carotene content, we are familiar, which help in providing better quality food and feed for the humanity. At the same time, this, the same GM technology can help in conserving soil and environment, environment through reduced tilling and pesticide use. Another question you may have, uh, how can agriculture biotechnology addresses the needs of developing country? Because as we are all, though we have coming or competitive to the superpower country, India is coming or a, a developing a superpower country in many aspects, not only in uh, providing, uh, uh, managing the COVID-19, but also we have our own tradition. We have our own uh, uh, history and records. 
So biotechnology application in agriculture should be a part of the package of solution to address the economic and social needs of the growing population. As per ISAA, you are familiar with the brief 49 report more than 80 million farmers in 28 countries planted biotech crops in 181 million hectares in 2014, reflecting a yeah, six point million or three or four percent increase in global biotech crop hectares. So globally, the biotechnology have been exploited, but still we are not able to exploit the biotechnology tools in our country extensively due to various factors, various factors. There are a group of people, they are uh, following or resist against the policies or introducing a new thing. But at the same time, as I told you, as a exploiter or the technologist, we are supposed to look at uh, the environmental issues, whatever the issues. Around the world, global biotech crop planting marked 19 years the continued growth, which justifies the continuous deployment of genetic modification in an Indian agriculture. How can the GM technology uh, for Indian helps for Indian farmers. Group uh, crop losses are normally the crop losses due to climatic condition, insect pest diseases and declining of soil fertility would also have to be factored into your applied genetic modification of crops. In India, this is the data according to the recent study by Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry, crop losses due to pest and diseases amount to a whooping of rupees 50,000 crores. Just imagine, where are we? How the farmers get benefit out of this cultivation of various crops? We are saying farmers should live properly or prosperly. How do they pr prosperly, they can live? GM technology can help Indian farmers in saving his crop from biotech stresses like insect and weed, soil degradation with traits like nitrogen use efficiency as well as the biotic stresses like water deficiency and salinity. With about 100 meter hectare of rain-fed agriculture in India, the drought tolerant gene could make big differences to lives of the farmers. So we can tell the tall and drought tolerant area, that's district like not only Ramanathapuram, even Trinalveli, once upon a time Trinalveli was Valley, you know very well the Damarabarni river basins, but there are some places, a drought tolerant or drought area where we can be able to cultivate all the crop. So another important question you may have, is crop biotechnology uh, safe? Biotechnology is safe, effective and widely used by more than million farmers around the world. Biotechnology is proven to has the successfully improved crop productivity for growers around the world since 1995. Various studies have shown the safety of the regular technology to human being, animals, and the environment. Some of the leading institutions like FAO have endorsed the safety. Europe has analyzed the results of over 130 research projects conducted over 25 years period involving more than 500 independent research groups and conclude that GMOs are not more risky than conventional plant breeding techniques. Not per se more risky than conventional plant breeding techniques. So does GM crop development need extensive research? This is another aspect from the point of uh, uh, students or the young budding side, so-called people who wanted to contribute something to the society. So does GM crop development need extensive research? Research in GM crops involve developing gene construct which gets transferred into the seeds. Developing a particular GM crop is expensive and takes 10 to 15 years of rigorous testing in lab because it takes time because we are not as soon as, though we are able to develop, but we cannot introduce into the natural feed immediately because we are supposed to follow certain rules and regulation and we need to follow the steps also. First, it has to test it in the labs. Then we have to transfer to the greenhouses. Then finally conduct the cattle feed studies and open trials and actual field condition 
across various parts of the country since india has a multi agro climatic zone to test bio efficacy and bio safety of the crop prior to commercialization so these are all the challenges is also behind unless otherwise we cannot uh, introduce or uh, release as a new variety immediately so with this uh, i would like to make uh, a full stuff for this but we can discuss as many as the points you want to discuss uh, due to the time constraints so uh, i am not able to focus all other things i have given the general uh, aspect of the crop um, production and the management especially the how far this biotechnology uh, is helpful for managing because we have been uh, focusing uh, many uh, horticulture uh, horticultural crops including apple with the, especially the northeast people we are familiar major horticulture uh, crops including the apple creating a genomic platform as well as the saffron network focus in the developing a tissue culture protocol for home production of desired size developing in vitro micro plants for the homelet production and develop complete agro technology and all other aspects also so with this uh, uh, thank you very much for giving this wonderful opportunity to sharing uh, my Experience. thank you sir thank, thank you, you sir uh, thank you dr justin uh, you have uh, extensively covered the area of agricultural crops and uh, thrown a light over the regulatory things the, the gm foods and uh, there are there are a few questions sir i would like to uh, pose it, pose them to you welcome sir uh, how ph is important for the improvement of fertility of the soil sir what is the ph how, how ph is important for improving the fertility of soil because uh, whatever may be the land before sowing the seeds of any crop you are supposed to take out the soil nature of the soil or soil type because when we irrigate based on the water system or the type of the water is also nature of the water and the ph of the water is Uh, related because most of the areas as far as uh, that we have been experience the acidity is also or the salinity also play a vital role uh, in absorbing or uh, giving the yield there is a reciprocal uh, relation with this uh, soil type as well as the water type of the water in the respective Uh, places or the microclimatic condition that is very important and another question is uh, which protein is good for health uh, whether it is animal protein or uh, plant based protein sir of course uh, for the debate we can take it as a, it's not a debate but both are equally important because we, as we are all the biotechnologist but we have been practice we have traditionally we have been practice we are consuming maximum amount of uh, plant based a uh, protein rather than uh, animal based protein but recent uh, technology or recent days even uh, go for a uh, paleo diet or the doctors or the people those are uh, suffering due to the uh, mellitus you know very well or the diabetes yeah. patients they are advised to go for uh, uh, keto kinesis or the pathways the pathways are different but both are uh, equally important but if you are like to have you can have a uh, uh, uh plant based protein rather uh, animal based protein okay sir a debatable question probably sir and another course, question is uh, how biotechnology will be helpful in fulfilling the motto of green revolution of course sir. we can uh, uh self satisfied because without the green revolution we could not able to reach what we have reached so far because in 1960 or 70s or 60s 70s most of the people could not able to get as a, uh, from the uh, agriculture point of view i am telling because uh, i have been uh, for the uh, my age is 42 but i have been practice even in my uh, own form itself those time we could not able to get maximum productivity 
But at the same time, you have to look at this. Uh, there are uh, whatever may be the even uh, the seasonal uh, agricultural vegetables or the crops like groundnut or uh, paddy or uh, uh, or uh, chilies or whatever. These are the crops normally we have to cultivate. But still, because of the advent or the introduction of the green revolution, we only we could able to reach the saturation level or self-sufficient levels of the productivity of various crops. So of course, so it is helping. Definitely, it is helping. So we are all of us should salute Dr. Uh, Father of Green Revolution, Swami Nadin. I'm a Swami Nadin, of okay. course. No, the question was how biotechnology will be helpful in fulfilling the motto of Green Revolution, sir. Because if you have a, in biotechnology, you need not to have uh, a acres of land. Even within the kitchen level, or if you have a, a house level, a three cent or two cent of a laboratory, if you have, you can multiply as many as or equivalent to the uh, plant which have been uh, grown or cultivated in acres. So in that aspect, we need not to depend or rely on the, uh, uh, the natural or macro uh, cultivations. Instead, you can go for a, a micro cultivation or a micro propagation of various crops. Yeah. Uh, another general question, maybe again a debatable one, sir. A GMO vegetables or fruits, are they good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, a good question. Because as I pointed out, it's not an uh, easy thing to come to a conclusion. Because up to 1970s, we, our forefathers, our senior, our people, our fathers, they were not able, they did not have our uh, rice for all three times. They, they took only uh, during the festivals or on Sundays or any auspicious or any uh, uh, important functions during those time only they had rice. After 70s or 80s, normally probably after 80s only we started to take up three times rice. Now we could be able to realize most of us get complained with sugar or so-called the mellitus. Yes. Right? Sir. So it took nearly 40 years or three decades. So most of us are most of us the doctor when the people are compliant with the uh, diabetes uh, patients mainly are diabetes or uh, the so-called the di diabetic patients they consult the doctor what they are suggesting please avoid rice for three times so from this what we understand what is the inference so after 40 years we could realize after 40 years only we could realize because of the consumption of our rice for three times the increasing number of uh, diabetic patients also increased. The same way GM crop have been introduced recently as far as an Indian context, we have been started to 2006 or 2002 onwards only. Though it has been worldwide 1996 onwards, the biotechnology or GM crop have been introduced. But as far as in India is concerned, 2006 only. So if we started to consume such a genetically modified crops, sometime, sometime, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, sometime. But in order to promote all the technology or exploit all the technology, we, we are not bothering about all the uh, negative aspects or other hand, but we are promoting or we are ready to convince the people, public as well as the so-called farmers. Sometime it may be. But at the same time, I'm not against uh, the GM crop. We do not know that the time will answer. Okay. Sir, and uh, one of the uh, common questions that many people have posted is regarding this GM crop's uh, safety and uh, how good it will be whenever uh, we consume them. That's what I told you, even as I told you, as a biotechnologist or as a faculties or the so-called scientists or the future uh, uh, stakeholder, uh, stakeholders of any one of these uh, group, we are supposed to concern, concern with the uh, impact because the impact cannot be realized immediately. So the time will be answered, but at the same time, the people, what we have been referring all the techniques, even for addressing ourselves or dress code or the technology or using uh, all the electronic gadgets, everything we have been 
borrowed from other countries or developed countries the same way what they are insisting or what they are justified is genetically crop is effective or there is no uh, side effect or it's good or effective only on the same concept on this concept which have been proposed by the people those have been experienced in other countries the same thing we are also trying to justify that's what i told you the time will be answered not okay. now we got we are not able to realize immediately because this is what i experience personal experience this is what we have listen or hearing from our forefathers those time the people they were not suffered just like the people those are because in each and every family the diabetes mellitus or the sugar patients are available everybody because we are all familiar india is the capital of uh, diabetes mellitus right so the same way now we can in order to promote all the things we can say but sometime it may be but at the same time in order to uh, need uh, in order to fulfill the challenges as the needs of the society we are supposed to go for uh, the gm crop unless otherwise people would have uh, maybe struggling due to starvation so there are all other things also taken into consider thank you sir uh i hope the participant then enjoyed today's session i request them to uh, contact justin sir um through email for further queries regarding gm foods thank you sir thank you, uh, thank you. for the thank wonderful lecture so and i would li also like to remind the participants that tomorrow the session will be in the morning from 10 to 11 this is because of the speaker uh, dr thomas jacob uh, who's from uh, saskatchewan canada so due to his time constraint we are starting the session tomorrow by 10 o'clock in the morning so please do join us tomorrow uh, once again i would like to thank today's speaker dr justin for the wonderful lecture thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you so we much we end the session thank you sir